keyword Ripple Bitcoin the Tesla Algorand Blockchain AMC The Sand Token Box The Board Ape Yacht Club GameStop Hey, hey folks, and welcome to Trading News Snaps, your weekly show where we highlight the stories that you may have missed from across each day of the previous week, and then sum them up here for your viewing convenience and pleasure. Of course, if you enjoy what you're watching, why not consider giving us a like and a subscribe using the button which is uh, somewhere. But enough of that, let's get into it, shall we? Public co-working space WeWork has seen its earnings reap the rewards of COVID's long-lasting impact on working culture. Yes, WeWork's second earnings as a public company was something of a mixed bag. It lost $4.4 billion in 2021, but most of that, it has to be said, was in the first quarter and losses have been getting steadily better since then. And the company reported revenue growth of 9% quarter on quarter to hit $718 million. It seems indeed that CEO Sandeep Mithrani is a man with a plan. The declining losses are largely down to his push to co cut costs by exiting unprofitable leases and then dumping non-core assets in the wake of former CEO Adam Newman's extravagant tastes. I mean, does anybody remember the artificial wave company he basically bought? The balance sheet has been helped by an easing of lockdowns too and a return to the office, with new desk sales growing to 87,000 up from 84,000 the quarter before. The really, really big news though was its forecast. WeWork is expecting revenue to jump at least 30% for the full year 2022 to hit up to $3.5 billion, driven by a pandemic-induced shift to hybrid working that fits well into the company's ethos. And it expects to reach profitability sometime in the second half of this year. The Ripple vs SEC Smackdown continues and while we might not be close to a KO just yet, Ripple has definitely won a round. Ripple's XRP token went soaring 16% in intraday trading on Saturday, March 12th to outperform an otherwise flat and slightly boring crypto market before getting swept up in the negative sentiment and closing the day down over 2%. A judge voted in favor, in favor of Ripple's fair notice argument. The SEC alleges Ripple execs carried out a $1.3 billion unregistered securities offering with its XRP sales, but the company wants to argue that it didn't get reasonable notice that it had violated the law. The SEC tried to shoot down that defense, but a judge now says it's a valid one. CEO Brad Garlinghouse called it a huge win. He noted that while he thinks the case against him personally should be over by now, he's, he's now confident that all of the SEC's claims against himself, XRP, and its execs will be dismissed and expects the final court ruling to be here sooner rather than later. Crypto investors had the time of their lives on Monday, March 14th, when their market got a day pass into the green after the EU decided not to ban Bitcoin. Yes, indeed, the Blocks Markets in Crypto Assets Committee has been trying to create a regulatory framework for crypto by 2025, and its original legislation wanted to ban all proof-of-work cryptos, which obviously includes Bitcoin, because of their environmental impact. But the crypto community was not happy of course, arguing the move could completely destabilize the industry and was quote unquote peak stupidity. Something they said must have stuck because the European Parliament voted to exclude that section and instead set a new draft rules to protect consumers and make mining more sustainable. Whew. Now Tesla investors want to know whether Elon Musk thinks of them before he does crazy stuff like, oh I don't know, challenging the president of a nuclear armed state to one on one combat. Yes, there is a lot to catch up on in Elon Land. He started the day by challenging Vladimir Putin to a duel over Ukraine. Yes, for real, he did this. Which got a lot of people on Twitter pissed and asking if he considers the impact of his tweets on Tesla's share price before he tweets them. The answer must be no. It got worse when the CEO also tweeted about the inflation situation, saying that both his babies, Tesla and SpaceX, were seeing significant recent inflation pressure in raw materials and logistics. Tesla has been fighting the chip shortage along with other EV makers, but apparently things are only getting tougher. Prices fell 4% on Monday, March 14th, so investor confidence was clearly shaken. The firm does seem to have a plan though. Tesla raised vehicle prices across the board for the second time in just a few days, with its cheapest model now starting at $47,000. Here's a little throwback for you. Remember LimeWire? Well, the long dormant file sharing website has been making something of a comeback and it's using Web3 to do it. 
LimeWire is back as an NFT platform after the peer-to-peer -peer file sharing system, which, let's admit it, was largely used for illegal music downloading, spent over a decade in the dark and the cold. But now it's chosen the Algorand blockchain to power its new collectibles marketplace because of the platform's environmental perks. The network has been carbon negative since 2021, while its scalability and security also added to the appeal. The Algorand token is up nearly 5% this week so far and looks like it could snap its five-week losing streak, though prices are still sitting at their lowest level since January 2021, partly because of all the craziness crypto has been going through lately, and it is a lot. As part of AMC's new diversification strategy, it has bought a stake in a mining company. Now, you'd be forgiven for thinking that we're talking about a crypto mining company, but you'd also be wrong. AMC has agreed to buy a 22% stake in Highcroft Mining, spending $28 million on the small and struggling gold and silver mining company. Given AMC has debt worth $5.4 billion, it's uh, a little bit baffling that it's splashing the cast like this. That's according to Wedbush analyst Alicia Reese, among others, myself included. But CEO Adam Aaron says they're on a glide path to recovery, whatever a glide path is. Apparently successes in hits like the new Batman and Bond movie have helped amass a small war chest that helps make the purchase possible, and he claims that the embattled Highcroft is very similar to AMC a year ago, and that he can help it surmount its challenges. Confidence is key, we guess, but and it seems shareholders agree because prices popped over 4% on Tuesday, March 15th, after four consecutive days in the red. Then again, AMC investors are hardly your typical bunch of investors, so there's no telling what thrills them. The big boys of the banking world have been making the metaverse their new playground as TradFi and DeFi continues to merge. The SAND token soared nearly 20% on Wednesday, March 16th for its best day of the year so far, taking prices to a two-week high as HSBC announced plans to join the Sandbox. HSBC is the first global bank to buy virtual land in the Sandbox, which it plans to develop to become a space that entertains sports, esports, finance and gaming professionals. Competing finance giant JP Morgan Chase kicked off the virtual land grab by buying a plot in Decentraland in February. So the battle for banking in the metaverse is well and truly on. Is the sandbox becoming the hottest new hangout in town? HSBC joins a long list of big brands and people who have entered the playground, including Paris Hilton, Gucci, Warner Music Group, and of course, Snoop Dogg. Software company Box saw its business boom after an investor fight came to an end. Cloud company Box has hiked its annual forecast. The content management software firm now expects annual revenue growth of up to 17% through to 2025 as it works to drive increased sales and improve its margins. Current fiscal year sales are set to see growth of 14%. It comes after a sour internal proxy fight with an activist investor. Starboard Value bought a 7.5% stake in Box in 2019 and soon after started calling for Box CEO Aaron Levy to resign and or seek a potential buyer for the company through several proxy filings. It all ended in a bitter boardroom battle last year. Turns out Box shareholders rather liked Levy though and voted to re-elect him as CEO. Box compromised by allowing Starboard to assign two new directors and the new team dynamic seems to be working considering shares are trading only $3 away from their all-time high of $29. The Bored Ape Yacht Club drops its very own cryptocurrency as it tries to become a crypto jungle VIP. Turns out investors are a bit like King Louie though, they're tired of monkeying around. Yes, the Bored Ape Yacht Club just airdropped its new ape coin token to its NFT holders, which will be used prime as the primary token for all new products and services from the DAO and its parent company, Yuga Labs. NFT holders got the token for free and could choose to either hold onto it or sell it for a profit. Turns out the coin really is the king of the swingers though. All that selling led to a volatile day for the token, which hit highs of over $18 and then lows of under $8, all within a few hours. Demand was through the roof, which Yuga Labs has already has big plans for this token and some people made thousands selling it from their free airdrops. Scammers were out in full force, as always seems to be the case with a buzzy crypto launch. There were multiple eight coins that launched on the Binance Smart Chain, and a phishing account was also set up to try and reel in incautious investors. Oof. It all got so bad that Yuga Labs had to issue an official warning against potential scams. Crypto sure keeps everyone on their feet, right? Whew. GameStop continues to test its investors' commitment with an unexpected holiday quarter loss. The stock sank nearly 
10% in extended trading on Thursday, March 17th, after the retailer recorded a surprise loss in its holiday quarter despite topping revenue estimates. It reported losses per share of $1.86 on revenues of $2.25 billion. Share prices are down over 40% this year alone, so they really needed a win. The video game retailer felt pressure on its margins from ongoing supply chain challenges as well as COVID, having made the conscious decision to absorb higher costs to meet customer demand. Apparently that side of things could go on for a while, so GameStop once again declined to give any guidance. But CEO Matt Furlong has a plan. The brand is in the middle of a massive turnaround plan and is focusing on becoming a customer-obsessed technology company to delight gamers. Its move away from bricks and mortar is going well and this quarter will see improvements in its e-commerce efforts, its app and its website, but will this be enough to please the apes? Okay folks, that is all we have time for, but we'll be back next week with the latest and greatest happenings from across the world's markets. But if you simply cannot wait, why not sign up for our daily Snaps email by heading over to tradingview.com, going to the Snaps page, and then clicking subscribe. Super simple, and we hope to see you there. But in the meantime, remember wherever you are, whatever you're doing, look first, then leave. Wanna, wanna creak some more? Yeah, I'm waiting for you to stop creaking.